Welcome, welcome again, everyone, for those who have just jumped on. I want to greet you on behalf of Apostle Mary. She is not with us tonight. She is on another meeting. And I um, just want to greet you on behalf of her tonight. Tonight, you can, we just want to invite you as well and encourage you that in your, on your platforms, you know, as the word comes tonight, that, you know, you just type in and just interact as the message hits your spirit. Tonight, bringing the word, tonight is a powerful woman of God, Minister Folks Abraham. And this woman has served our country for many years in the capacity of a government minister. She's also a lecturer, wife, mother, and she is a fabulous teacher. She is one of our teachers in our discipleship loop here at TCMI. Minister Abrams, we want to welcome you. God bless you as you bring the word tonight. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you so much for your ministry. And thank you also for that wonderful song. He is the God of the breakthrough. Thank you, Melissa. And I just want to greet everyone at TCMI. I love you. I love Pastor and Apostle Mary. She is a powerhouse. You know, she's such a blessing to TCMI and to this nation and to the world. And we want to give God thanks for her. And I thank her for giving me this opportunity to share with you tonight. I am so blessed to be here. And I believe tonight that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. I know that the Lord has something in store for each and every one of us tonight. And I know that tonight is the night of your breakthrough. Amen. And I say that because tonight is the night of tabernacle when God is with us. Tonight is one of the feasts of the Jewish calendar, one of the important feasts where we have a holy convocation, where God says, come before him, uh, join together as we are on Zoom and on our platforms and in our house churches, and as we're accustomed to do on every Wednesday night. And he says, come before me in these particular feasts because we have an open heaven above us tonight. And so we wanna thank God for his goodness, for his mercies, we know through COVID, God is doing so much for the church and through the church and to the church. And he's doing it to the whole world. He's giving us a rest, believe it or not, from some of the things that we need not take part in. He's giving us a rest and he's saying, come away with me. I want to be with you. I want to tabernacle with you. And Yahweh said to Moses in Leviticus 23, verses 1 to 2, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of Yahweh, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Notice, he did not say that this is the appointed feast of any one or particular person or persons. He said, this is Yahweh's feast. And that's why we as Christians are now learning to enter into some of these feasts, some of these things that we have in fact not been able to participate in because of a lack of knowledge because we did not realize that these feasts were to be celebrated by all. And because of that, now we're coming into the fullness of the glory of God. And so we just want to thank God tonight for his glory. May the glory cloud come over us tonight. Father, tonight I just pray your Shekinah glory will come into every home, will come into every person who is listening right now that they will feel the touch of your angel's wings, almighty God, that your presence 
presence will come to tabernacle with us. We pray for Apostle Mary, Almighty God, as she delivers the word. Almighty God, tonight, elsewhere to the world, Almighty God, she's a gift to us. I know, God, we want to share her with others as well. And so we thank you, Almighty God, for the body of Christ meeting tonight. And we ask, Almighty God, for your presence with us tonight. Without your presence, Almighty God, nothing is possible. Without you, Almighty God, we cannot do anything. We cannot go anywhere. But Almighty God, tonight we pray you visit Jamaica. Almighty God, we pray you visit our houses in Jamaica. You visit, Almighty God, the Prime Minister. You visit, Almighty God, the leaders of government. You visit, Almighty God, every church. Almighty God, in this land, every school teacher, Almighty God, we know what's going through the education system. Almighty God, tonight we pray that you tabernacle with us right inside here of Jamaica. And Almighty God, we pray that Jamaica will become the place that you have ordained it to be from the foundations of this earth. Almighty God, that we will sing forth your praises to the ends of the earth. And so, Almighty God, we thank you tonight, everyone. God is good. God is bringing back the awareness of these peace to the Christians in these last days. And we acknowledge that the feasts are here for all of us. Of course, the feast started with, um, you know, Passover. And this year was a particularly important Passover because since 3,000, over 3,000 years ago, when the Jewish people left Egypt by the hand of Almighty God, he saved them. He delivered them from the hands of their oppressors and he took them and led them through the desert and brought them into the promised land. And this piece of tabernacles is meant so that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> so that we can remember when God delivered his people, when God saved his people when God delivered the people from the hand of the oppressor. And even Thanksgiving, uh, which is known on this side of the world, American Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving, and even in some of our churches where we have harvest time, it comes out of the concept of this feast, where we give thanks to Almighty God for all that he has done for us, where we remember what he has done for us. And we've just come through the season of uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the New Year, the Jewish New Year, and also Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, where we've come before the Lord in repentance for our nations. And I know that um, we've had several different um, groups that have gone to whether the uh, the places in America, also in Jamaica. And there's been an event called the return, which was supposed to happen right across the world. And the idea is that we return to God. Because, you know, if we do not return to God as a people or as individuals, we will not receive the redemption that God has for our nation. And so we look at this time as a special season. And I know that many pastors have been praying and God has been raising up leaders to bring persons back into his connection, into connectivity with God. And I would say that over this period of the COVID-19, we have in fact had a reset in our lives. And God is showing us what is really important you know, the home, the family. He wants us to build an altar in our families. He wants us to go back to the family altar where we praise God, where we read the Bible together. And even going through this time where children cannot return to school, but they're at home. Now they're home with the parents and God is saying, parents, 
I want you to teach the children. I want you to teach the children my laws. I want you to teach the children my ways. And God is calling us back to his way. And he says, of course, that his way is far above our ways and his thoughts far above all our thoughts. Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And we see in the full moons, in fact, over um, the Passover, there was a pink super moon. And so we've seen the glory of God in the heavens. And at this time also, there has been a full moon. And this period of tabernacles or Sukkot began on October the 2nd this year, and it goes on to the 9th of October. So we are smack in the middle of this season. I want to say that God is doing a new thing. Indeed, we are hearing that all the time in the scriptures, but now we're seeing God is doing a brand new thing. We're all online. We're able to connect to so many different prayer groups and so many ministries. And God says, be busy about his business because he is returning soon. Amen. And we know the familiar scriptures, Ecclesiastes 3, where he says, there is a time for everything under the heaven and a season for every activity under the heavens. So at this time is the season of tabernacles. And so God wants to rest with us. God wants to draw us away. If you feel, you know, the nudging of him during the day, just listen, just take a break, just talk to him, just talk to your dad, just talk to your daddy, just tell him how much you love him. He wants to be with you. He wants to be close to you. He wants to tell you just what it is for you to be alive. In fact, this week, he, he took me aside and he, he brought me to the point of my conception, which is, you know, I always think of my birth, but he brought me before my birth and to the excitement that he felt and the excitement that he felt when you were conceived because he knew that he had a plan for your life and that you were special in his sight. And so just draw close to him. Let him just show you things that you know you didn't know anything about before. Something new God wants to bring to your mind. God wants to show you something new about yourself. Something new that he has in store for you. And this time is a time of the great thing. Of course, we know we had Passover. There are seven feasts, Passover, unleavened bread. And then there's the first fruits, Yom uh, Habikurum, and then there is Pentecost, which is the 50th day. And we know that Pentecost uh, is also known as Shavuot or the week, uh, the Feast of Weeks. And at that time, we know what happened on Pentecost, that we received the Holy Ghost. And we received the Holy Ghost living with us. Now, uh, we went on to the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, which is the new year. And we are in the new year 5781. It is still the decade of the mouth. So God is saying that we need to proclaim his word. We need to speak to the mountains. We need to remove, you know, the, the things that are not pleasing to him from our land. We need to remove idols. And we need to speak his word into being. We need to declare his word. And then, of course, we went into the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and now we're at Tabernacles. And I just want us to read Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 43. And I'm going to read it. And God has given us certain directives. He's given us Four directives. Number one, he's called a holy convocation. Number two, there's an offering of fire. Number three, he commands us to rejoice. And number four, he commands us to remember. 
So I'm just going to read the scriptures. Perhaps you can, you know, get your Bibles and read along with me. So as I said, Leviticus 23, and we're starting at verse 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days shall ye offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. There are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, a drink offering, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye shall give to the Lord. Also in the 50th, sorry, the 50th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in the booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in the booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the peace of the Lord. The main thing is remembering God's faithfulness, God's protection, God's provision, God's guidance, and God's preservation. I want to say it again. God's faithfulness, God's protection, God's provision, God's guidance, and God's preservation. First of all, I want you to note about the branches. There are three different kinds of branches that God said that you should take, and that's in verse 40. So he's talking about their branches that they're going to wave, and there's significance in these branches. They're called together the lula. There are three kinds of branches. There is the willow, there is the palm, and also the branches of the palm trees, the willow trees, the boughs of the thick trees, and the willows of the brook. He said, first of all, the willow and the myrtle and the palm. The willow grows in the wet places, the wet places. And he wants us to remember, and he wants the Israelites to remember that although they went through a desert, God provided water for them. We may be going through a desert time right now, but God says, I will provide you with water. I will water your trees. I will give you water in the desert. I will not leave you or forsake you. I will always give you what you need. And then there is the myrtle that grows in the rough places, on the mountains. And God says, I'm with you in the rough places. When you're going through rough times, God says, 
I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And then the palms that grow in the low places, God is saying, I'm with you in the low places. I'm with you throughout your life. From the moment of conception until now, I have been with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God says, these are significant for you. I want you to understand that I love you. And then he says, I want you to dwell in booths. You know why? During this season, God is reminding all of us, he's reminding the children of Israel that we are not here forever. We are only passing through this life. This life, we are just journeying through this life. We're on our way to the promised land. We're on our way to be with him. We're on our way to somewhere more fruitful. We're on our way to somewhere much better than this. This too will pass. We may be going through a lot of problems right now. Some of us have lost jobs. Some of us have lost relatives. But God says, I am with you. I am taking you on this journey. And I will water you. I will provide for you. You know, when they were going through the desert, God created a pillow of cloud over their heads to shelter them from the heat of the desert. And at night, he sheltered them from the cold of the desert with the pillow of fire. And he said, I'm behind you. I'm in front of you. I'm all around you. And God says, I will take you through. And he says, remember, and I want you to tell this to the generations to come. I want you to tell this to your children and your children's children that they will know that I am a faithful God. I'm a God who will protect. I'm a God who will provide. I'm a God who will guide. You know, he knows the way I take. You know, we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know that God knows the way. God knows the path that you take. And God goes before you. He removes the stones and the rocks out of your path. And he makes the crooked path straight. And so although tomorrow is very uncertain, things we don't know what will happen, but God says, I'm going to guide you right to the promised land. And so we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. God is taking us through and he gives us manna every day, fresh manna, fresh bread every day. His word must be consumed in our lives as fresh every day, fresh revelation, fresh encounters with him. He's never stale. And he said, yesterday's bread is not good enough for today. And I can tell you 10 years ago, what would have sufficed 10 years ago cannot help us today because today's a different day. The devil has turned up his heat. And God says, we need to turn up the fire, hallelujah, in order to destroy the works of the enemy. And so we can only do that by being, you know, close to him and receiving his rhema word every day. I am the God who sees, he says. I am the God who knows about this coronavirus. I am the God who can preserve you. I am the God who can take you through. And he says, remember all of my benefits. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. The benefits of knowing God. The benefits of knowing God. You know, God is such a good God. He says in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, David said, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. You know, iniquities, what are iniquities? In law, we have something called, you know, the inequities or the equities. Iniquities are something that is not necessarily a sin, but just immoral or grossly unfair behavior. You know, there's so much of that around us. But God says, you know what? I forgive your iniquities. 
God forgive us our iniquities and heal our diseases. So God says he would not put any of the diseases that he puts on the Egyptians. He would not put them on us. He will preserve us through COVID-19. So God says that we must adhere to his word, adhere to his ways, adhere to his voice. We must hear his voice and follow him. So we are looking today at the redemption of God. He says he does not reward us in verse 10. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He has not done that for as high as the heaven is above the earth. So great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. You know, he's our father. He pities us. He remembers that we are just frail. Yeah, yeah. You know, when Israel was in trouble with God over and over because they forgot what God did for them. They forgot his benefits. They murmured and complained. And God is saying over this season, remember me. And so when we look at Deuteronomy 8, verses 11 to 20, I'm just going to take out a few verses there. He says, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he said, your clothes did not wear out. Your feet did not swell during those 40 years. You know what? God is preserving us right now. You know, COVID-19 will not have dominion over us. The enemy will not have dominion over us. But you know, God is testing us right now to see what is in us. Will we come closer to him? Will we follow him? Will we turn as a nation towards him? Will we call upon him? And will we do what he says that we should do? You know, I was listening to Apostle Mary, and she was talking about God is not just saying, you know, we've cried out to him, but now he's, we are going to cry out for him, that we do what is right, that we live in a righteous way, that we be careful what we say and what we do with our friends, with our, you know, with our neighbors, with the people around us. God is expecting a higher standard from us now. And he's saying, I want you to observe my commandments. Verse 15, he says, he led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He's able to you know, keep us from venomous snakes, scorpions, all the things that could have bitten them, but he kept them. All the things that can come against us and our children. But God says, I'm keeping you through this period. He brought you water out of the hard rock and gave you manna to eat in the wilderness. Something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you so that in the end, it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who yes. gives you power to get wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swear to your ancestors as it is today. You know, I was listening to Steve Jobs when, you know, the founder of Apple, and when he was dying, he said, listen, if I had known, I have all the money in the world. 
but I cannot eat. I have all the money in the world and I cannot get up off my sick bed. You know, you may not have all the money in the world, but if you have health, if you have your health, you have your strength, you can get up in the morning, you can make your tea, you can make your coffee, you can drink your tea, it's nice. You can make your porridge. You can go down to the seaside, which I know now has so many fish out there that God has provided for us. And you can enjoy, and we can enjoy the beautiful weather here in Jamaica. People pay hundreds, or, you know, thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to come and enjoy what we have here. Let us appreciate what God has given us. And he has given us the power to get wealth. It's all from him. And he wants us to return a tithe, to return a blessing, you know. He wants us to dig wells in this time. He wants us to sow in the time of famine and to reap a hundredfold. He does not want us to draw back at this time and to say, oh, times are hard, you know, I, I, I you know, give up. God says, this is the time to press in. This is the time to sow. And in the feast, he has encouraged us to sow. You know, don't forget God's goodness. He was the one who took care of them. He's the one who's taking care of us. Uh, he led us out of captivity. Even in Jamaica, you know, Jamaica also came out of a history of slavery. But how many of us here, uh, when, you know, it's Heroes Weekend, which is coming right around the corner, which is right around this time as well, where we give thanks, how many of us realize and hear the fact that Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle were ministers of the gospel yes. of Jesus yes. Christ? Yes. It is God who delivered us, this nation, from slavery. It is God who is keeping us. But how many times do we hear it and give the glory back to God? You know, we focus on so many negative things. But God has delivered us from them all. And God says, it's time to take communion in this land. You know, remember that it is God who brought us this far. And God will take us home. You know, he also talked about a holy convocation, which is a gathering, an offering by fire. You know, he is a consuming fire. And he's going to burn away everything that is not of him. And that's happening right now. I know it's happening to me. I know it's happening to a lot of people. A lot of the things that, you know, I used to do or go places. I always want to go somewhere. Now I'm not going anywhere. But God says, you know what? This is time to be with me. All the busyness that you used to, the Martha in me, you know, all the business has come to nothing. It is sitting beside Jesus and sitting at his feet that makes us important, that makes life sweet, that gives us what we need. He wants the fire to burn in us and to consume us. Heaven is hot right now. The temperature of heaven is hot with the fire of God. Yet still, some of us are still lukewarm about the things of God. You know, if we couldn't go to service and we were forbidden from going to service altogether, we would want to go. Yeah. But some of us have gotten complacent. Mm -hmm. We don't show up. And God is saying, this is time to turn up the heat, not the time to cool off. This is not a cooling off period. God is expecting us to lay ourselves on the altar and to be willing to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. This time, the burnt offering and the fire of God speaks of revival. You know, God is ready for revival. Mm. It is time for revival. 
Revival needs to happen now. We don't have to wait for revival. We need to pray for revival. We need to talk about revival. We need to declare revival. God is waiting on us. He is ready already. And there's a great harvest of souls to be won. Persons are getting desperate for the Lord. Heaven is hot right now. And we need to turn up the temperature in our own lives when it concerns the things of God. Revival is not the work of man. It is exclusively the work of the Holy Spirit. God chooses to manifest himself in an extraordinary way during revivals. And fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit and of revival. What is revival? According to the dictionary, similar words are a comeback, a bringing back, a reestablishment of the things of God, a reintroduction, a restoration, a reappearance, a resurrection, a resuscitation, a relaunch, a reinstallation of the things of God, a regeneration of his spirit, a revitalization, a reinvigoration, an awakening. Mm -hmm. We're hearing this word more and more, and a rejuvenation. So God is saying, it's time for a rebirth, a renaissance, a time to get up and to start fresh with the things of God, to awaken our spirit, to revival is in the air. Revival, the sound of revival by the trumpets being blown, by the shofar being blown, and the ministry that we're in, it's called trumpet call ministry. It's time to blow the trumpet in Zion and revive the church of God. Hallelujah. It's time to rejoice. It is a season for us to rejoice. He commands us to rejoice in him. Right at this time, he says, rejoice and be glad. You know, I was in Toronto when they had the Toronto blessing, they call it, which was a revival of, of, of sorts. It was a revival because many persons came to the Toronto Airport Church. This was a big, you know, sort of warehouse, flat building that they um, rented, I think, uh, around the airport area because persons were just flying in, coming for the blessing and leaving and going, you know, just for the weekend. So it was all around there. And persons were laughing, you know, in the spirit, persons were just standing on the, you know, on the walls as if they were drunk in the Holy Ghost. I remember I took my children there and they prophesied over my children. They prophesied over me. And I remember there was a gentleman there who was a preacher from the U.S. And he thought this whole thing was all ridiculous until it hit him. And he was thrown on the floor and he kept crawling around. He thought he was walking, but he was on all fours. And everywhere he went, people were laughing and pointing. He did not realize that he had been creeping around until he reached his hotel room. It was funny. It was very funny. And I thought to myself, this was crazy until I was hit by that spirit of laughter. And I began to jump on one foot. And you know, like that when you laugh. And I thought, my God, laughter doeth good as a medicine. You know, some of us are heavy. There's a spirit of heaviness, but laughter will break that spirit of heaviness. We break the spirit of heaviness of the people of God tonight. And we say, rejoice in the Lord. Be glad. We break that spirit of heaviness that the enemy wants to put on the people of God. And we say, that spirit of heaviness shall not come on the people of God. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Remove yourself from the people of God. The people of God shall have joy. The people of God shall have peace. The people of God shall be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We shall be happy. Hallelujah. And then the whole world will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles after the millennium. 
because when Jesus returns, he will return during his feast and he will return in Jerusalem. And according to Zechariah 14, verses 16 to 19, it states, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So guess what? Jesus is going to keep the feast of tabernacles. Should we keep the feast of tabernacles and start doing it from now? Practice rejoicing. Practice, you know, just worshiping him at this time. Hallelujah. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up from all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And so, you know, sometimes I hear the farmers crying out for rain. If only we understood the peace. If only we understood when to come before the Lord and to pray for the rain. He says, listen, I will shut up the rain if you don't come. You know, the rain means the blessing of God, the blessing over our lives. Amen. He wants to bless us in this season. You know, and there, there are five blessings when we keep the peace. And I'm looking now at Deuteronomy 14, verses 22 to 28. When he says, thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed and the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thy oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayst learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place is too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then thou shalt turn it into money and bind up the money in thine hand and shall go into the place where the Lord shall choose. And you shall bestow that money for whatsoever your soul desires, for oxen, for sheep, for wine, for strong drink, or for whatsoever the soul desires. And you shall eat there before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. And then, of course, he says, you shall give to the Levites, which is the priests, because they do not have a, a inheritance with you, so they depend on the people to bless them. And also, he says, you should give to the stranger, the fatherless, the widow. So those who are poor, those who are in need, we should share what we have with them. So we need to bring our tithes and our offerings. We need to give a special gift, you know, perhaps give a, a special gift to our apostle, give a special gift to Israel, and also to those in need around us. And the five blessings of the feast, three feasts, there are a holy convocation, a time of an open heaven. There are the Passover, Pentecost, and this one, the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is the last feast of the year in which we can partake in this blessing. So put aside something special. And what he says is that he's going to bless our oxen. Oxen represents your substance, your job. He's going to bless your job, your shelter, your finances, your business, your livelihood, you know, your farm. If, you, if you're somebody who does fishing, if you're a taxi driver, if you're a teacher, if you're a lawyer, doctor, chef, he's going to bless your livelihood at this time. So the first blessing is for the oxen, which represents your substance. The next blessing is for your sheep, which represents your necessities. God will never let you go without the essentials, your house, your food, your shelter. Some of us are wondering, are we going to have shelter? Are we going to have food? God says, if you come before me this season, 
and you rejoice and you keep this feast and you, you come close to me and you give me an offering, you will always have your necessities. You will never be without. You know, David said, I'm young and not old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And then he talked about the wine, which is a symbol of joy flowing from the fruit of the spirit. God's presence, the Holy Spirit, the new wine, the celebration. Ah, hallelujah. So he talks about that wine. You know, don't put new wine in old wine skins. So we want that new wine to come into our lives. We want the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We want that joy, hallelujah, to keep us and to bless us. That's one of the blessings. So that's blessing number three. Blessing number four, strong drink. You know, take a strong drink of the Holy Ghost. Take a strong drink of the, the Spirit of God. Take God's healing power. The strong drink deals with the power of God, his healing power in your life, his dunamis power. Take a strong drink of the Holy Ghost. He wants to bless us with himself. Take a drink. Let's take a sip. Just God says, I'm going to bless you in this season. And then the fifth blessing, whatsoever your soul desires. You know, God wants to give you the longing of your heart. Yes, we don't, we think that, you know, I heard when I was growing up, like God was somebody mean. You know, oh, he's going to give you your, your, your needs, not your wants. But he says here, he's also going to give you what you desire. The closer you are to him, of course, you're going to desire the right things. You're going to desire the things of God. You're going to desire the things of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes it can be just something that you desire that God knows that you really want. You know, I would really like to go to Israel. I haven't been there yet. And God has promised me that I will. You know, COVID came and all of this. But that's something that I know God is going to give me a desire of my heart. You know, I want all my, my family to be saved and to know him. That's a desire of my heart. I know God's going to do it. Yes. Oh, God just does things for you, you know, that, that, that you don't expect. You know, one of these suddenly something comes upon you by surprise. God wants to surprise you. You know, when you have a child, you'd like to give them a little surprise birthday party yeah. or surprise them with a nice gift, something you know that they really want. Some of you want a really nice laptop. God can surprise you with a new car. Mm. God can surprise you with things that you, you might think are far-fetched. You might think it would never happen. But God says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or even think. And so God is in the business of blessing. And at this season, there's an open heaven. God says, come before me, just you and him. Just you and him. Go under the stars, go under the moon. And say, God, I want to hear from you. Well, that's how I first got saved when I went under the stars and I said, God, if you're real, talk to me. And he did. He answered me. He says, you'll be fond of me when you seek me with all of your heart. So God wants to give us a special blessing at this time. And, you know, I'm just thinking that he's such a sweet God. We can just sow a seed at this time, you know, yeah. According to what you are able, God is not expecting you to give what you don't have. God is expecting you to give what you do have. And remember the widows might even, you know, it's a percentage. What might be small to you, you know, but it's a percentage of what you have. God knows it's a sacrifice. And God is in the business of rewarding you for sacrifice. So I just want now to 
Let us just do the Aaronic blessing. Uh, number six, verses 24 to 26. I, I'm closing now. God wants to bless you abundantly at this time. God wants to pour out his Holy Spirit, the former rain and the latter rain, you know, in Joel. God wants to pour that spirit upon all flesh so that your sons and daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. And that your old men will dream dreams and your young men will have visions. And he says, the Lord bless you, number six, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. But it's amplified in that there are the letters in that particular blessing and pic pictures in that blessing that amplifies it more. He says, Yahweh, the head of the house, with his own work, strengthens his own hand. And by his work, he binds and overpowers the destroyer using the authority of his hand. Yahweh, the chief ruler, he secures life and order. His teaching strengthens. His work secures the hedge of strengthening life. Yahweh's strong pressing hands lift up. His work adds living utterance. He strengthens authority. His hands destroy and by his work, he binds authority and covers, covers destroy and destroy authority and using the authority. So when we say the Lord bless hand. you, he says by his Yahweh, own hands, he's going to ruler, strength he secures his own hand and order. for you. He's, he's going to keep you strengthened. He's going to his bind and overpower the work of the of destroyer using the authority Yahweh's of his strong own hand. hands. And Lift he's going to make his face his shine upon you. Yahweh, the chief ruler, is going to secure life and order and, and teaching and strengthening you. His work secures the hedge of strengthening life. He's going to be gracious to you. Yahweh, he's going to turn his face toward you. And he's going to lift you up, you know, as a father lifts a child and looks at his face and he lifts him up before, before him. God is lifting us up at this time before himself. And he's saying, you are my child. I've engraved you on the palm of my hand. You are special. And so he is going to destroy every work of the enemy. When he gives you peace, his hand destroys chaos. Every chaos that the enemy would want to bring in your life, God is going to destroy by his authority. Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord God, that your word has gone forth. Lord God, we thank you tonight that you will destroy every work of the enemy over every child of God tonight. Almighty God, every family, Almighty God, is covered under the blood of Jesus. Every family, Almighty God, will be happy tonight and rejoice in you, Almighty God. Every family will receive your blessing tonight, Almighty God, in a powerful way. Every family, Almighty God, will receive the blessing of the Lord tonight, Almighty God, from your Feast of Tabernacles tonight. Almighty God, we rejoice in you. This is the time of rejoicing, Almighty God, where you're going to bless our oh, oxen. You're going to bless our sheep. You're going to bless us, Almighty, Almighty God, with new wine. 
You're going to give us the power of the strong drink, Almighty God, of your Holy Ghost, Almighty God, the strong drink of your Holy Ghost. And Lord, you're going to give us even the desires of our hearts. You're going to provide that for us too. And so we thank you, Jesus, that there's no God like you. There's no one like you, Jesus. You're able, Almighty God, to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think by the power that works in you. And so tonight, Almighty God, we say, Yahweh, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Father, we thank you tonight for your Holy Spirit that convicts us, Almighty God, and shows us who you are. We thank you, Almighty God, for the power that works in us. And we thank you, Jesus. Your angels have charge of us. We have sweet sleep tonight. And we thank you, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Oaks Abraham. We bless you. We just thank you as your minister to us. And we just want to acknowledge Apostle Mary. Hi, Apostle, if Apostle is on. And tonight, Apostle is on. Good evening, Apostle. We just want to acknowledge you. Thank you, Yvette. Good evening, everybody. What a powerful, insightful, deep word from the Lord that Minister Sharon has brought to us this evening. So encouraging, so anointed. Um, Minister, I want to thank you so much for bringing this word to us this evening. And I was able to get on right as you started. And, you know, what hit me this evening was this is the last feast for the year. This is our last opportunity to engage God at this level and to really come before him with what's in our heart and to come under this open heaven. And I just want to join with her. She prayed that ironic blessing and unpacked it. And as we leave now, some of you are going to be jumping onto your prayer groups and to your life groups, to your mentorship groups, to your house churches. And those of you that have joined us from other places, we just speak the blessing of the Lord over you right now. I want to also encourage you that Men's Encounter is this weekend. I know that Yvette announced it. And Pastor Mark is with us right now. Pastor Mark, why don't you just jump on and you have 60 seconds and share about Men's Encounter. And then we are going to go to our groups. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to be having Men's Encounter this weekend. And this weekend we're looking, looking forward to an awesome, awesome time in the presence of God where men will be ministered to. The Holy Spirit normally comes in and just pours out so that men are delivered from whatever it is that may ail you. And in this season, we just want to encourage every man that is online right now to sign up for Men's Encounter. We are sending the information out. We'll be connecting on Zoom. And so every man, we encourage you to get connected with Men's Encounter because this is a place where there's tons and tons of blessing. As Minister Abrams folks just talked about, that uh, Sukkot ends on the 9th of October. Men's Encounter starts on the 9th of October. Come out and get your strong drink of the Holy Spirit. Of Amen. Men. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Looking forward to seeing you, men. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, right now, I just thank you for all that was poured out um, through the word tonight. Rich, rich, deep word just washing over us, saturating into us tonight, oh God. Father, we lift up Mr. folks as she just um, rejuvenates. We speak your grace and blessing over her. And Father, as we rejoice in you this week, as we rejoice in you, as we choose to enter into this time of Sakato, oh God. Father, I 
thank you that every blessing, Lord God, will be ours as we sow in this time, as we give in this time, as we worship you in this time. Father, as we exercise our faith and trust in you, oh God. Father, I thank you that we will walk under the supernatural grace, the supernatural blessings of God in the midst of a time of trial. And so, Father, I release your grace and your presence into every home in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So from our house to your house, we say happy Sukkot, Elias, and happy Sukkot. Amen. And we say God bless you and have a great time in your prayer groups. Thank you. Bye.